Welcome back everyone, it's Halo 4 Tutor with an all new Halo 4 multiplayer gameplay commentary. As always, you know I'm bringing you my signature tips and tricks that will help you step up your game and take it to the next level. I'm going to help you win more games and have a lot more fun while you're doing it. I have a lot of information to cover, so let's just jump right in here. I'm playing uh, essentially Team Slayer. Uh, I can't remember all the new fandangled terms in Halo 4. I'm going to get it down here pretty soon. But uh, basically, this is uh, in the war games. And uh, I'm playing on the map Adrift. Okay, and this is, a, this is a pretty cool map. It actually is very, very similar to the map Condemned from Halo Reach, if you've played that map before. The reason I say that it's similar is because most of the action revolves around the core of the map. Right in the middle, there's kind of a center open area where a lot of action takes place. And then there's a big ring around that center area that goes all the way around in kind of a big loop. And um, so you can kind of run around in circles and kind of come in at the center from a lot of different angles. And so it provides some pretty interesting gameplay. Now, obviously, a lot of the gameplay is going to be focused on the center of the map. And you're going to notice that throughout the gameplay. So the team that can control the center is going to have a significant advantage here. Okay. And that really holds true for most of the Halo 4 maps that I've seen so far. If you can control the center of the map, you have a really, really significant advantage. So you need to make that a point of emphasis while you're playing to keep control of the center area. Now, with that in mind, that doesn't necessarily mean you always have to be in the center area, okay? That just means you need to control the center area. Sometimes that means you want to go in the middle, and sometimes that means you want to be attacking from the fringes, right? You have to play smart. And the one thing I've noticed with Halo 4 is that you can get killed so quickly. I mean, you can absolutely get crushed uh, in the blink of an eye uh, much, much more quickly than previous Halo games that I've played. So you got to really play very smart. So I'm going to give you a few tips for playing smart. Number one, you don't see on the screen here, but you do have the sprint ability available to you at all times. Now, it doesn't last forever. Uh, it does have to recharge a little bit, but you can't see it here on the screen. And do not neglect to use that sprint ability, okay? You, you've now got essentially two, two loadout abilities. You have your sprint ability, which is available with, with every loadout in every game. But you also have uh, additional loadouts that you can choose and customize, such as active camo, which is what I'm using in this game. Um, you can also use jetpacks and, and the, uh, that big shield. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to get down all the terms. I'll, I'll have it here, but I want to get these videos up as quickly as possible. Nevertheless, um, you want to make sure that you're using that sprint. and Because you don't see it on the screen, it's really easy to forget that it's there. So don't do so. Uh, so I've got the saw gun here. That's an automatic weapon. Uh, it seems to be pretty doggone powerful. Um, I haven't tested it fully, but you will see that I use it to uh, get a couple kills early on. Seems to be very, very effective. Uh, right here, I get my first kill with that one. And, you know, that brings to mind uh, another very important tip that you need to remember. Uh, this applied in previous Halo games, and I noticed that it applies more than ever here with Halo 4. And that is you need to have a really good weapon combination. You need to have two weapons that complement one another, okay? You don't want two uh, weapons that are too similar, okay? You want to have weapons uh, that complement one another. What I mean by that is, you know, I've got that saw gun, which is kind of a good short-range automatic weapon. And then my other weapon is a DMR, which is a precision weapon, really good at long range. You'll see I, I stand up on this perch throughout a significant portion of the game. I'm able to just tag people with headshots from way up high, right? I can get a real clear shot at their head, and it's very difficult for them to come up here and get me. And that's another part of map control, right, is uh, really controlling the center areas as well as the high ground. And I can tell you right now, just from playing this map, that, the, that these little kind of perches right up here at the top of the map uh, that look down into the center are going to be very highly contested, okay? A lot of players haven't picked up on that yet, but this is a really good spot. It's difficult to get to. You have some great visibility, great escape points, and that's going to be one of the best spots on this map. So uh, keep that in mind next time you're on a drift. Yeah, try to find one of those perches up in the center. You know, and then once the enemy team realizes what's going on, they don't even want to go out into the middle. And then you can just run out there like I'm doing now and just pick them off. They just don't stand a chance. So, you know, this strategy should be working very, very well. 
the the other thing you'll notice that I'm doing throughout this map is really working together with my team. Uh, I get several assists throughout this game. I think six or seven, perhaps. And additionally, uh, I'm able to clean up a lot of kills and help my my teammates out. So you always want to keep an eye on your teammates. Don't don't uh, let them go out there all by themselves. Try to give them a little bit of support. But the other thing that I've noticed, because you can get killed so quickly, I mean, it's really just like a knife melting through a uh, hot knife through butter. I mean, you, you, do, <laughs> you can just get absolutely blown away really quickly. Is you don't want to, you know, if your shields start going down, you feel like you're going to lose a, a battle, you just got to boogie out of there. Don't chase people. You don't need to put yourself in harm's way. Uh, you'll see several times here I get people all the way down to one shot, but I can't clean them up. I don't want to give away the excellent vantage point that I'm at. But fortunately, my teammates are able to clean up a lot of my kills here during this game. So, uh, you know, it works very, very well. So I'm going to trade in the uh, the saw gun for the rail gun. And this puppy is sweet. It takes a little bit of charging and you just let it go and it just blasts anything in its path. I get uh, a couple really sweet kills from long range with this thing. It's very, very powerful. If you ever have a chance to pick this puppy up, uh, boy, don't pass it up. This is a really cool weapon. And again, it complements my DMR very, very well because it's kind of a, 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 a heavy weapon. It's a little slow. It's just the one blast. So it's good at long range, uh, but once you run out of ammunition, you can just switch out to your DMR and pick up some headshots like I'm doing right here. And that is my running riot. That's 15 kills in a row. And I had forgotten at this point that I died at the very beginning of the, the game. And so I thought I was due for a perfection. And so what I started doing here for about the last minute, I played pretty conservatively because I thought I was 15-0, and 0, wanted to get that perfection. And so I play a little conservatively, didn't want to die. Uh, you know, it turns out it didn't matter because I already had died, but I forgot about that. Uh, so anyway... Uh, I, I hope I've been able to cover a couple tips here that are helpful for you, especially in Adrift, but some things you can apply to other games as well. I'm going to be giving you a lot more tips, a lot more specifics about weapons and maps and loadouts and other things. I already have a few other videos up, so make sure to check them out. But I um, want to throw out a poll question there. Uh, for those of you who have already started playing the game, what's your favorite weapon so far? I mean, for me... Uh, you know, I you know you can't miss the standbys, the DMRs, and the battle rifles. But that railgun that I had in this game was really sweet, and uh, I've had it in a couple games, and it just really blows people away. It's a really fun, really fun uh, weapon. So, well, let me know what your favorite weapon is. And uh, while you're here, please make sure to leave a comment down there below. Uh, please add this video to your favorites. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the video. Um, I have a lot of other fantastic tips and tricks on my channel, several more to come. If you want to make sure that you stay on top of the competition, that you're uh, ahead of the pack and winning those games, you're going to want to stay tuned for more videos to come. This is Halo 4 Tutor. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.